Hello my friends and welcome back in. In this episode, I'm joined by the lovely Mario West, where we explore her story of recognizing the control system from a very young age, navigating her awakening process, and eventually developing her own system which she shares with others of healing and deprogramming from mind control. It was a fascinating conversation and I hope you enjoy. Hello and welcome back everyone to the Wizard Factory podcast, where together we explore the universe through ourselves. My name is Logan Hart, and today we are joined by Marja West. If you're new here, please give the video a quick like and subscribe to the channel and make sure you hit that bell notification so you see all my new content that's going to be coming out. So let's go ahead and get into it. I'd love to first of all welcome Marja. Happy to have you. Hello, darling. How, <laughs> how goes it? Happy to be here. Thanks for the invite. Happy you're here and happy to be back, of course, making new content again. So cool. let's get into it. Uh, I'd like to start by just allowing you to introduce yourself. So tell the audience, you know, who are you? What are you about? Uh, a bit about the work that you do. Okay. Okay. Well, I consider myself to be uh, the probably the grandma of One Great Work Network. <laughs> I think I'm probably the oldest person there. Um, I'm I'm going to be 63 in a couple of months, and um, I have been at the work of disseminating love, truth, and beauty since I was in my teens in the 70s. Wow. So I have seen a lot of slavery shit shows come and go. Mm -hmm. And the latest one that we were all uh, amidst the the COVID, the uh, seven noints, and that's what I call it. Just so, you know, people aren't like, what is she talking about? Because we all know this and we're all sick of it. Um, mm -hmm. So I've seen all these crazy things happen. I've had a lot of projections onto me because I'm... Eurasian. I was an immigrant. I had to learn how to speak English and all that kind of stuff that I must be a victim and poor little thing because you're so, you're so tiny and precious. And having these really uber leftist professors when I was in college, just like try to shove down my throat that I'm a victim because I'm so small and on and on and on. And I'm like, yeah, no, hmm. I don't, I don't believe that. I've never been I've never had that experience with white people. I've never had that sort of racist thing. And so, you know, my indoctrination, so to speak, going down that rabbit hole of like having faced, faced Marxist leftist ideology from the time I was super young, I just went, you know what, fuck this. I don't believe in it. And um, at that point, I'd read the Gulag Archipelago by Solzhenitsyn, and it scared the shit out of me. It's like, oh, my God. And that wasn't all that long ago. And these people just feigning victimhood, it just kind of, like, blew me away. So it made me very wary about um, group, mine, think, feel, do, speak. So I'm not into being part of a group. I don't like totalitarian shit shows. I don't like left, right, center paradigm. Um, I don't like to be told what to do. And uh, so my my background, my upbringing, because I was raised by basically a psychopath man-hating biatch from hell, um, made me very acutely aware of abuse. Um, so I've always been a champion for children because I had to champion my own ass growing up. Um, by pretending that I was a fairy. I entered into this imaginary realm with this wide open third eye and my psychic abilities to align with nature, not align with the shit show called my family, which by the way, I feel like each one of us, we have to deal with our first cult and that is our family of origin. Right. Because we were all gifted by parents who had consciously conceived us because they completed the great work. We're all fucked from 
the moment we are conceived because that's where the programming of the matrix begins at our conception with blue booties, pink booties, rainbow booties, whatever, whatever, you know? So I have just been really acutely aware of this sort of a, uh, this bearing down of this domination of this seemingly invisible force, but it wasn't invisible to me because it was very clear when I was a little girl watching my family get upset about what was going on in the boob tube and with me as a little toddler going around the corner where the, the uh, electrical outlet was on, on plugging the fucking thing, like, why watch it if you're going to get upset? I don't understand it, you know? And so having that acute awareness and that imagination and the lining up with nature, I was just like, I did not belong in what I call the world or the matrix. And so... Um, and I'm not talking about the movie. I'm just talking about, um, well, first of all, the world is not the planet. The world is the matrix, okay? The matrix is a satanic inversion. It's an overlay, I, I think of it overlay. as. It's an inversion of, of the planet and the true quantum field creation field universe. And most people are fucking mesmerized by the matrix. And I saw it very early on that now, yeah, my attention is not going to be hijacked. I'm going to be aware in my center screen and everything that I'm witnessing in that outer screen, I have to be really be careful because it's easy with media. And especially this time where we have all this technology to sort of get sucked in to that outer screen. And, you know, if we're getting sucked into the outer screen, there's the acerbic commentary that's going on in our inner screen, in our heads, of our judgments, our criticisms, our worries, our, um, you know, just all of that sort of mind fuckery that goes on head tripping. All the while, the matrix owns both those attention centers. And so for us to be uh, self-aware, to be awake, okay? Not just to the whole thing about Guberman being slavery, that being woke to that, that's absolutely necessary. But I know so many people that think just because they've discovered that, that means they're awake. It's bullshit. It's like, no, no. You have to learn how to unslave yourself. And the only way we learn how to unslave ourselves is by owning our attention. In other words, by owning our attention and waking ourselves up and seeing reality and entering into this center screen, our awakened attention center, so that we can observe the outer screen and be fully cognizant of the shit show that's going on in our heads. Okay, that's what it means. You own all three of those attention centers and that makes you awake. That's spiritual awakening. Right. And it's not a one off event. Like of new age, new 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 age bullshit says, or the new cage, as my friend Derek would say. I mean, it's just so funny, all the stuff, but people fall for this nonsense that spiritual awakening, that once you're woke and you're spiritually awake, your life is gonna be perfect and the cellulite on your ass is gonna be gone. It's not <laughs> true. You know, there's too many things in the outer screen of reality. And each one of us is creating our own layer of the universe with the things that are important to us. And hopefully we're focused in on what's important to us, but most people are focused in on what's going on in this outer screen and trying to keep up with that bullshit. And that is mind control. That right. is total mind control. And then the mind control slips in here because, oh, shit, I must be a loser because I don't relate to this. Oh, my God. And it just goes on. Exactly. So, so for me, I saw that right away. And uh, I used to try to talk about it with my friends when I was young. And I mean, all my friends, they just wanted to get stoned, drunk. Uh, do psychedelics, fuck the brains out, make as much money as possible. And it just was like, you know, I just felt, I felt alone. I really did. I felt alone. Like, hi, hi, what, what's going on? And it wasn't until, I, I guess it was the late eighties 
or mid mid eighties that I started having these dreams about this healing modality that was coming through me in these dreams. And at that point, I wasn't very much into like new age bullshit. I did a lot of uh, philosophy. I read books by Neville Goddard. I read uh, Florence Scovel Shin. I was always uh, very curious about how to wield reality, how to mold reality, mm. not for my selfish reasons. I'm out for the win-win. I want everybody to remember that they're here to move formless into form in their own unique way. Okay. And I don't mean imitating some fucking celebrity that you fucking salivate and adulate. That's not what I'm talking about because all you're doing is you're giving them your power. There's something else that's much deeper and much more alive that you're here to bring forward. But if you're mesmerized by the outer screen, and you're just drowning and you're not even thinking about what's important to you because you're trying to keep up with the mind control, it's it, it's not a good thing. And that's what I see. That's what makes me so sad when I'm actually waltzing in and out of the matrix and going about my business, doing the things that I need to do to not only take care of myself, take care of my family, keep up with my my health, my well-being, not be part of any of these status shit shows. I mean, it's a full-time job, as you know. Of course. <laughs> yeah. That's great. So, um, oh, go ahead. Yeah. So what happened with these dreams is I got downloaded with the step-by-step-by-step-by-step -by -step -by -step instructional manual to deactivate trauma and how to be able to do that and not just waltz in and out of the matrix, but waltz in and out of the matrix virtually undetected because I'm not pushing up against it and irritating the fuck out of it, <laughs> which is what most people do when they first start out. You start irritating the matrix and the matrix starts, you know, scheduling some downfalls for you, which I've, I've been, you know, I've survived all those things. And you learn to readjust you learn how to tweak things you learn how to not do certain things because number one it's not going to end well and you know it's not about going to war with yourself or other people it's really about extricating yourself from the matrix and focusing in on what you want to create mm. and often that means in order to create what you want you do have to extricate yourself from a lot of mind control from a lot of slavery shit stems uh and <laughs> you have to and it's a commitment you can't half-ass it you can't have one foot in here and the other foot in here and oh that's okay if i indulge in this it's called moral relativism you can't do it it's not gonna work okay because then you're going to be divvying up your consciousness and your awareness and your creative energy in all these different places and you think you've exited the matrix no you're even deeper in the matrix because you're following a script that is meant to not have you integrated at all. It is meant to split you apart in many different places, in many different ways, such that the divide and conquer mind controls of the matrix, and there's so many of them, they win hands down. And it's hard to like wake yourself up from that. I mean, I know people who are just, you know, I mean, they're, they're, they're totally in it. They're totally in it. And they don't even know that their energy is getting sucked. And they wonder why their health is going south. They wonder why they look like shit and they're, they're still fairly young. And they wonder why their life isn't working because you have too many congruent incongruencies. Um, I, I believe that the awakened state is hard mind body soul coordination it is alignment in your feelings and your emotions with your your high level thoughts and beliefs and taking inspired action and those actions that are actually contributing to either self-murder or soul murder you just don't fucking do them you know and, and you stand strong in, in that alignment and that awareness, that heart, mind, body, soul coordination 
is the alignment. That is, for me, that's unity consciousness. It's not that we're all going to fucking ascend to, you know, some where, wherever. You know, when I hear the New Agers talk about that, I mean, I'm pretty sarcastic. I'll, I'll just kind of roll my eyes and, and laugh, you know. Right. I mean, we're definitely here for a reason. This is where the work is done. This is where we have manifested. Uh, yes. And that's what counts, you know, or that's what matters. There's this kind of like turning of the nose towards ma the material as if it's less spiritual or something like that. And I, yeah. I, I reject that. Yeah, I totally reject the that. The spiritual you and the material are i mean it's all all the universe is just one thing there's just different layers to it so it's all yeah. spiritual yeah that's what we're navigating yeah. currently yeah so totally that's fascinating um i didn't know that about your backstory so um I, i'm sure it must have been hard for those professors and and people that were trying to project that victimhood onto oh my, you they did not they, know what the fuck it's to like do. well why wouldn't you want to be a victim that makes you special that means you get to like rub that in people's faces and make them feel bad that's, and that's give you right. special privileges and things like that yeah. you know what's wrong with you exactly that and it it's was like during the time of um I can't even remember what the fuck it's called because I blocked it out. It's it's like giving somebody a handicap or a head start in order to do some some kind of athletic event. It's like why fucking compete at all, dude? Right. You know, why I don't would even that feel good that. even if you win? What would does what right, does it even right. mean at that point? Right, right. So I got invited to uh, the women's studies uh, program and they were trying to, I, I went to a very leftist school, state university in California. Pardon me. <laughs> I, I can't help it. I have to do it. I have to do it. Because we speak freely here. This is a free speech yes, platform. Okay. <laughs> I, I saw, I just saw so much bullshit in the political scene and I'm not political at all. I don't, but I don't believe in any of that shit. It's like, I'm sorry, you're going to rule over me. No, I don't think so. It's not happening. So what I witnessed was just a lot of this projection of, um, victim, 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 victim. And let's get the token science geeky girl here. And she's petite. She's probably, she's probably, you know, gotten beaten up or or whatever yeah i got beat up by my own mother okay so it, let, let's not put white men in here or this or this systemic racism that i personally i never saw it so i saw more racism within asian culture and mm -hmm. i'm part asian uh, and I, I saw more of that within that, that culture. So it's like, so this projection of all this systemic victimization stuff, I didn't relate to it, you know? And yeah, am I small? Yes. I have three black belts. So you just take charge and you learn how to have dominion over your over your your being so you're not worried about the the asian stereotypes or living up to that or anything you oh, just went God. for it with the martial oh, arts <laughs> so, it was funny you should say that because i had to navigate that because as i was as i was growing up and you know as a young woman i had a lot of that shit projected on me because i have a certain look that that uh that certain men and women, I mean, they're all yaya gaga zaza about that. And it has nothing to do with me. It's like, ah, dude, get the fuck away from me. It's gross because it has nothing to do with who I am as a person, as a human being and what I have to offer or any of my gifts. It's some twisted, fucked up, perception managed brainwashing mind control that men and women do in order to hijack try to hijack my creativity my sexuality and twist it around into some fucked up sex shit show hmm. and that's one of the divide and conquer mind control programs in the matrix is that we're all born to be sex slaves and we all have to navigate and excavate ourselves and get conscious about where we sit in that little in in that mind fuck otherwise we're all in it and so you know i've written a lot about um 
uh, the sex slavery, mm -hmm. just in terms of it generally, let alone the um, the, the systemic uh, trafficking and pedophilia that have gone on for mm -hmm. millennia. Most people, oh, well, this is such a new thing. It's never existed mm. before. And I'm just like, oh, man. I mean, I want to punch people. And that's one of the things that I've had to navigate throughout the years as I've gotten older and more mature. Is that, Maria, you don't, you don't hit people. <laughs> you, don't, you don't start shit. And when I was young, I used to start shit. You know? So I've gotten arrested a few times. I've broken broken bones on people's faces because I've gotten upset, you know, and this is just my own embodiment of, I, I think, uh, this unfairness and this rage. I'm all about justice mm. for uh, people who don't have the means, who don't have the means, who don't have the power, who don't have the voice, which is why, you know, utilizing my own experience of child abuse and, and sex abuse has has you know allowed me the the verve and the energy to uh you know be a champion for children be a champion for those who don't have a voice who are innocent so you know it, it's so i i've had a lot of like really good spiritual support just in terms of you know my own inclinations to take responsibility you know, oh, I'm small. Well, maybe I need to take martial arts and learn how to take down people who come at me and threaten my person. And so, um, but I'm also realistic about it because, you know, martial arts can only get you so far. And I'm not a follower of the Hollywood bullshit, you know, where you have these cheek guys in full makeup and long nails and in five inch spiked heels. And they're rendering a perfect jump spin kick, landing it on the dude after the dude has <laughs> punched him in the face. Nothing is fucking blowing up. I mean, it's amazing. It's amazing. Right. And one of the things that I had to learn taking martial arts particularly in taekwondo and um and and jujitsu is learning to take a punch a full contact punch to the face and feel what it feels like when it starts to blow up mm. and and not lose consciousness about what the hell to do so i know that if i'm gonna if i'm being attacked by some big guy i have five moves that i need to make and they need to be precise if they are not executed precisely, I better run the fuck away because he will kill me. And that's that's just it. Or, uh, you know, hopefully I'm lucky enough to have a sidearm with me when it happens. But, you mm -hmm. know, I mean, these are just some of the things that ran through my mind and inspired me to, you know, get your shit together, girl. You got some things to learn. And right. so martial arts natural law right i was um, gonna say being able to advocate for myself you took a, took care of that physical need to protect yourself physically but you also have to arm yourself mentally with the Absolutely. the proper knowledge and everything so i'd like yeah. to talk about uh how that experience growing up and going through all that stuff uh led you to creating your truth love beauty is that that's what it's called love, right love truth and beauty love yeah, truth love, beauty truth, and right beauty. uh as yeah. a as a platform as i i would assume sort of an outlet for what you were kind Absolutely. of downloading and and experiencing and and learning there yeah so um in the mid 80s after i had this series of dreams um i was working with this amazing uh, she was a Jungian therapist, but she was also a trauma deactivator. And she knew quite a lot about the energy systems of the body. She knew a lot about the chakra system. She knew a lot about psychic self-defense. So uh, she, she and I, we had these immense conversations about this download. So she helped me translate it. She helped me put it together. And it was very clear, wow, this is clearly an instruction manual of how to deal with demonic entities that endeavor to take over the body, the human body. 
And uh, she related this, and I, I definitely related this, that this was akin to what was going on with humans in the matrix. Because when we have our energy hijacked, what's clearly happening is that the matrix is actually inserting its little devices in not only in our chakra system, but in our various organs and tissues, each of the chakras are governing certain things. And so what started happening is as soon as we put this together, I started manifesting one client after another, after another, after another. And these were coming from random people where I don't know why, but I'm sending this woman to you. Um, and so the first person that came to me was the daughter of, of some local politician. I don't remember if he was an assemblyman or a councilman or whatever, but she was having all these memories of, yeah, SRA, satanic ritual abuse. And uh, I'd never heard of it before. Mm. You know, I mean, the closest thing that I came to was uh, being obsessed with the movie, The Exorcist. I was obsessed obsessed with that movie. And uh, I was a teenager. I was a young teenager when that movie came out. And there was something intriguing about it because I realized, hmm, why am I so intrigued by this? And little did I know that the dream instruction manual that came through me that was gifted. It's not my work. It, it was gifted to me to be the caretaker of it. And I have since shared it with hundreds of people who you know want to be trained in how to do this because this is what we have to do we have to raise our frequency such that we don't match the fucking demons who are running the matrix mm -hmm. because that's what it is you keep a low frequency and you are hijacked and which is why you know the matrix does so much of this work over time to control our air our water our food our thoughts through mm -hmm. technology, through uh, through illness, whatever you want, they they can interface with. They will, and one of the main things is sexuality. Absolutely. And so, and so, as I started piecing this together, I mean, this young woman that came to me, um, I mean, it was pretty frightening. And so, you know, it's like when you make a decision to show up for something that is being divined to you to bring forth like I, I didn't have a degree in psychology i on on purpose did not want to interface with any kind of shitstorm of certification of this or that you know i'd had enough of it in the university system and i thought it was all bullshit anyway um but the thing is is that when we're dealing with energy I mean, who's gonna who's gonna fucking certify energy? It's like kiss my butt, okay? I, I don't really, really care. And I didn't come from a place where, oh, well, uh, I better I better get some kind of like certification or some kind of this or that or whatever in order to uh, feel like I can proceed. I just let the universe and the divine lead me. And when you decide that you are going to receive that download, the universe provides. So there were a chain of events. I mean, it's unbelievable. I could not have thought about how this was going to materialize if I had engineered it myself. I had nothing to do with it. I just showed up. So I showed up for this person. And then this person showed up and this person, this person. And next thing I knew, I was traveling everywhere and and people were just and it was funny because people were like well do you have a card i didn't have a business card for this for like eight years <laughs> you know it, it's like it didn't occur to me oh i should have a business card no it never ever occurred to me and so it was like you know following this light and step by step by step by step and uh you know i'm very organized in terms of as a writer as a creator um i'm a musician i'm a dancer and the martial arts you know um i have a science background so it's like i'm very organized i know how to organize a body of material and i know how to organize it in a way where i can disseminate it so that it is clear hmm. 
And it's not some woo woo confusing fucking thing, you know, where you're like, what? Like, what? Can, can we just bring it back down to the planet? And very, very grounded in that, in that respect. And I think that is part of the, um, I think the sort of new age bullshit, I think it, it's one of those things where it's, it's designed to confuse people about energy. It's divine. It's designed to confuse people about their divinity, about spiritual awakening, so that the average person can't possibly believe that they are exactly that divine in the flesh, just like everybody else. And the mind control within the matrix makes sure that people are just dumbed down, that they have forgotten who and what they are, that they can't even imagine. Like I'll, I'll ask people questions well what would you love to do like if you had the perfect life what would that look like what would you be doing and they're so fucked up here their third eye is so damaged beyond repair or just covered up because in the matrix there's only five senses when you exit the matrix we have seven we have our intuition Okay, our imagination, our intuition, our ability to envision and see all the possibilities and our seventh sense is that of our generosity and care. It's the masculine principle of gifting, giving, okay, and the feminine principle of receiving. And and so it's so simple, but here in the matrix, here in the matrix, it's just five, it's that five sensory hell which is why they poo poo our psychic abilities. They make sure that our pineal glands are all fucked up and calcified. And um, I mean, it's all by design to get us to remain enslaved, to get us to give up, to get us to just, you know, suck it up and do all the things that we are not meant to do because they don't know any other way. They can't see another way. They can't intuit another way. And it's, you know, it's totally sad, really, really sad. So over the years, I've been able to, you know, I received the download, I systematize it. I started sharing it. I started going all over the world, all over the planet. I visited some really horrific things. Um, I, uh, during the, um, the war in Yugoslavia, I visited, I visited rape camps uh, and I was just horrified. And what made it even more horrifying is that for all of the uh, whining that women do and, and feminists bitching and ming about the, the, the patriarchy and the abuses of men, uh, what I witnessed, these places were run by women. Interesting. They were run by women. So, you know, don't give me the shit that, you know, all, all men bad, because for me, I think the biggest oppressors of humanity are women themselves. And I get a lot of shit for saying that. And I don't minimize the abuses that women have gone through. I don't minimize that at all. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, to have this blanket statement that you know men and the patriarch well guess what the patriarchy and the matriarchy are flip sides the same fucked up coin that is you know uh just thrown at us it's a divide and conquer tool of the matrix and the powers that want to be make no mistake about it you can't fall for it you have to extricate your own masculine and feminine within. And I don't care, people. They're two genders. That's it. Get over it. Stop. You know, I can't I can't take those conversations. And it's funny because a lot of women who invite me onto their platforms are goddess entrepreneurial, the sacred feminine. They think I'm a man hating feminist. And when they get me on their platforms and the shit that comes out of my mouth, they realize, oh, God. She is not one of us. Mm -hmm. it, invariably, I'll get I'll get kicked off of a call. <laughs> <laughs> I have found myself like, wow, I I I I think I think I just got kicked off. Oh, you know. Well, you're all good here so far. <laughs> no red flag. <laughs> um, it's awesome. yeah. 
I, that's for sure super important because the way that I would frame that is that it's taking the attention off of the abuse, off of the act itself of not yes. respecting, of not understanding natural law and, and putting yes. all the focus on the abuser or the many, 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 many forms that that yes. abuse can take in, in yes. you know, by color and gender and nationality and all these yeah. different ways. Let's just look at the, the behavior itself and demonize that. It's universal Absolutely. and it doesn't yes. get, get everyone divided and fighting over who's going to win yes. the victim Olympics. Yes, exactly. <laughs> exactly. And it and part of what goes on in the matrix is that our victimology, victimhood gets weaponized. I call it weaponized woundology, where mm. now we're just so offended by this and that. And and I know in a lot of in a lot of camps, in my travels all over the world, and I've been to over a hundred countries. So wow. I've seen a lot of different different cultures. Most don't speak English, and I've seen what goes on, and it is, I mean, straight up. We all want the same things. Mm -hmm. You know, we want to provide for our families. We want to be left alone. We want to create. We want to do good. We want to be seen. We want to uh, um, co-create. We want community. And it's like, it, it, to think that, and I, I don't want to get down on, on, on the Western world because, you know, that in of itself, I, I, I don't want to make it about that. But we have these universal threads and these universal wants. And eventually they all get hijacked when we get sucked into the matrix and we get sucked into the, the perspective the perception that whatever media is putting out, the news, and we all know that all these news agencies are all owned by the same fucking people who are running the shit shows, who are the powers that want to be. And so most people who don't know that, I'm just like, wow, okay, somebody, please, somebody download these folks so that they know about it. It's so irritating to me because that for me is basic. Um, but people don't want to believe that because it would create this bomb that would like go off. And, uh, you know, life as they know it will not be the same. But guess what? It happened to me. It happened to you. I mean, you start going down these rabbit holes and you realize, oh, shit. This is like, this is so systemically fucked up. And you can't avoid it because once you start waking up, you can't go back to sleep. You can try. Right. Hey guys, hope you're enjoying the episode so far. I just want to take a quick moment to offer you a special gift. It's the free initiation package download. This is a free download package that includes the toolbox mini course. I created this package to equip you with all of the essential tools you need for any type of energetic or magical practice for anyone serious about their spiritual development. It's comprised of three parts, the circle, the breath, and the voice, where you'll learn how to cast the circle of the magi, various breathwork techniques, including a powerful guided breathwork meditation, rune galler, and more. You'll also get access to the inner sanctum, our private Facebook group and Discord server, as well as some Wizard Factory wallpapers for desktop and mobile, all for free. And for those who've already seen this course, I'm happy to announce that this is a brand new remake with better production and even more information. You can find the link to get yours in the description below. So check it out and let's get back to the content. So you sort of receive this download and well, you learned some from the mentor and then you got some yeah. just intuitively and then you systematized yeah, it. Yeah. Um, I sent did you come up with a name for it? I, I call it absolute balanced mastery. Awesome. Because it is the balance of the masculine feminine being, doing, balancing, suffering with pleasure and enjoyment. You know, I mean, ooh, pleasure and enjoyment. Oh, shit. We can't do that. 
Well, why the fuck not? I mean, I don't understand, you know, that somehow there there's this uh, this moral high ground of suffering. That is weaponized woundology right there. Yeah, I, I personally think a lot of that comes from Christian ideologies at a, at a very, very deep level. It, it's not only there, but I think especially here in the West, because that's yes. like the primary like way yeah. that we're brought up and belief system that we're taught. I think that, you yeah. know, that comes from that a lot yeah yeah it's like yeah don't buy it kids don't buy it enjoy yourselves mm -hmm. life is meant to be enjoyed it's that We're same idea to... of like the uh you know the, the the matrix is um like reality itself and everything's a lie and it's kind of like you know you you need to abstain from it almost like associating pleasure and enjoyment with indulging in the matrix and that yes. and, and you're you're somehow like yes. less spiritual by yeah, having nonsense. that human experience right yes yeah that's nonsense the totality of human experience is the full range all that really dark ugly shit and all the blissful stuff that is the totality mm. of human experience that's and a good beyond point too that. there's a lot of that denial of the dark side it's as well it's it's usually kind of like one side or another people get totally yeah. sucked yeah. into that and yeah. they're like nihilistic and just uh you know very dark in that way or yeah. they're frankly luciferian just completely light worshiping and denying yeah. the darkness out there but yeah. by extension yeah. the darkness within themselves so they're they're, Absolutely. they're creating like a schism of their own mind exactly exactly the evil exists within each of us so it, one of the things that was very very powerful for me to like really understand because you know i, I was one of those people where i gnashed for 20 years pedophile saying as you know I, I was just going to war with everything mm -hmm. and what happens when you go to war like you know i mean we talk about my old channel going down well even before that you know i, I i've gotten i've gotten in trouble i've gotten audited uh, several times I, I you know you just get in the crosshairs of shit and you make trouble for yourself right mm -hmm. so what i realize is that oh what I have to do is that I have to examine the law of allowing. And the law of allowing is you be yourself and let everybody else be different from you. You may not like them, but you don't put your attention to them. And so for me, I was like, kill all Satanists, kill all that, you know, just all this fucking raging shit. Mm -hmm. And I finally got to the point where it's like, oh my God. And this is after my shit got wrecked several times where, you know, you're all, everything that you work for is just like wiped out, you know? And so what I realized is in order to really, really succeed, in not just up leveling your life but staying conscious staying awake and being able to waltz in and out of the matrix doing your thing and creating a win-win in your layer of the universe okay you have to be really good with letting people be exactly as they are different from you and that they have every right to exist. And mm -hmm. that includes the Satanists and the powers that want to be. They have every right to exist. That's called freedom. Freedom it's of choice. It's freedom. Exactly. And I mean, I realized that I was like spouting off all this freedom shit. And look at me. I was just fucking judgy. I was critical. I was in people's faces. I was starting shit, you know. And it's like, and then I wonder why my shit gets wrecked. It's like, hmm. because... I have all this energy pushing up and and when I extricated myself from that and of course this is after after losing everything I realized I had come to this full circle where it's like oh wow it's like intellectually I knew that but I hadn't quite embodied it and I needed to lose a lot of my you know own personal shit in order to get the lesson mm. and i tell people that and people are like you know people hate me for saying that but that's what it is that is freedom and if you can get good with that yeah 
You're going to rock it. You're going to rock it on your terms. And is it going to be, is it going to be easy? Not necessarily, but it's going to be easier than going to war with it. I think it really comes down to having a greater intentionality with your energy because yes. either way you, you know, that's a choice that you have to make at any given moment, how you're going to show up. And yes. like you said yourself, you sp you poured all this energy into a platform that got completely erased. And you're putting all this energy into rah, 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 everything. Yeah. And yeah. then you have to be honest with yourself. Is that energy well spent? Or is there yeah. another way? It's not There's that you give way. up. It's that yeah. you're more intentional, like I said, exactly. in how you're exactly. expending that energy in a more productive way. And that exactly. that's, a, that's like the the mature, like kind of like yes. you're, you're going through that. You're moving along to, to better yeah. ways of being and doing. Absolutely. Absolutely. And one of the things that opened up for me is, you know, after all these years, I met someone and, and was able to, and I'm going to say this, to rise in love, you know, to hmm. actually open to a relationship after nearly a decade. I mean, it's like, what? You know, and that was my own intentionality was to not to be able to be good with myself and my own sovereign self in every on every level in order to attract someone who could mirror that to me. And so that's been kind of an adventure. That's like for me, it's it's like one of the last one of the last final frontiers, so to speak. Um, you know, and I, I'm not saying final, final, because I feel like uh, for those of us who are on this path, the more creative energy, the more um, uh, like intentional creativity, uh, um, the more projects that we want to bring through our physical bodies, what you're doing is you're summoning life force to animate your cells. And, and to bring your projects, your babies forward and have them materialize in your layer of the universe. And for a long time, I didn't quite understand that. I mean, I know that in the last couple of weeks, supposedly we went over 8 billion people on the planet. So that's 8 billion different layers of the universe. Like you and I right now, we are interfacing our respective layers of the universe together. And with this broadcast, we're gonna be interfacing with many, many thousands and thousands and thousands of other layers of the universe and so on and so forth. This is the community that I wanna participate in, that I want to help build, you know, with, you know, just so many, I'm meeting so many amazing young people, and I get to say that, um, such as yourself, um, who are doing the great work. And and it's painful to do the great work because every nook and cranny of unconsciousness is going to have to come to light. And each one that comes to light, it just brings you more in alignment with your purpose, with your, uh, you know, your offering, with, with your love, with your light. And, um, you know, it's important because in our respective layers of the universe, there are all these people who are gravitating toward you, people who are gravitating toward me. And then we come together and there's this synergy and it just starts sparking. And that is that, you know, that shared light, that shared uh, d divinity. And, and people are hungry for it. They are hungry for this. And so, um, you know, it's one of the reasons why I just like appreciate visionaries so much, you know, because we've actually been able to unslave our third eye mm -hmm. and, uh, and receive instruction, receive uh, the inspiration. Absolutely. It's, it's my belief that it's only truth truth is the only thing that can actually unite us because yes. like you said there's there's now over eight billion people i hadn't heard that actually by the way um that's eight billion different versions of the truth eight yes. you know that many different um perspectives on the same 
one reality that we live yes. in yes. and only by unifying our perspective to truth itself and not yes. continuing to fracture and shard off into this moral relativistic yes. hellhole that that's what's causing all the chaos at the end of the day at the at the like root level and yes. only by coming back into that truth and aligning because like you said a hundred different co uh, countries you've been to yeah. everybody needs the same thing we all yeah. just want love yeah. and connection and and again truth and love are just the masculine and feminine um expressions of the same thing it's it's yeah. unity yeah so okay um we, i love it it's great it's great you totally get it <laughs> i love it of course of course you get it i mean that's why you are doing what you're doing and you know and you you've suffered in some of the doing and you know what i i'm telling you it, it's all going to come back it's all going to come back to you and it, it will it the the blossoming of all of it and i get to watch i mean you know that's one of the things that i'm really delighting in 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 meeting so many young people who are doing the great work is i've gotten to watch people just like bloom blossom expand mm. you know uh share their gifts and that's that's part of it i mean that's like freaking awesome that's that, thank you for you saying know? that and that is the one thing that we should all be doing uh, yeah. as individuals that's that's interesting because it's like um when you phrase it that way it's a universal truth we should all be giving our gifts back as gifts and yes. and expanding and take by th taking in more knowledge more awareness and um so that would be the universal universal way of framing that but yet as a, each individual it's going to show up differently so i can't say you should be making content you should be learning guitar or whatever because that yeah. may not be your thing you should be yeah. doing your version of that so Absolutely. it's the universal truth that shows up differently and beautifully unique for each person. Yeah. I love yeah. that. And that, that is like, oh, the, the cosmos, the cosmos mm -hmm. uh, manifested, materialized. I mean, it's, it's a beautiful thing. Right. The infinity of the all, right? Just the endless layers and, and fractals of the same thing yeah. expressed in different ways. So how is it that you, uh, did you go from that understanding and, and developing that that methodology uh, and then built the love truth freedom around that or love truth be beauty uh, sorry <laughs> so love truth and beauty really just came about um uh a, a couple of year a few years ago uh four years ago in uh in berlin of all places you know because i was a little bit stuck there and um just in that place of well you know what encapsulates what it is that i'm endeavoring to inspire hmm. um that that we are like you say love and truth the flip sides the masculine the feminine the being the doing and and the beauty of that and what mm -hmm. we're here to like bring forth within each other and for each other, you know, like I say, I like to go for the win-win. And um, so it, it came out of that. And it really came out of my own evolution of stop focusing in on the ugly. Stop focusing in on the on the evil and the ain't it awful and uh, the exposing, because I did so much of that. I mean, and there are plenty of people that want to go there, go there. If that's what you're thinking, I mean, go there. I, I'm not, I'm not telling people n not to do it, but for me, I needed to eat, uh, up level my offering because at the end of the day, it's not just about deactivating trauma and mind control. It's about being able to wield reality and to mold it because we're grand creators. That's what we are. We are grand creators here to move formless into form. And we have to learn how to mold reality. So that is like the sort of up leveling of what it is that I'm offering. It's not just the trauma deactivation, the mind control deactivation. It's being able to activate 
your creator spark mm -hmm. and materializing what you're here to materialize and manifest. And so I, I just love that. I think it's, I think it's really um, uh, the, it, it's a culmination of like almost 40 years of my work, just put together in a way and it would not have come together had I just intellectualized it. You can't intellectualize it. You know, because there's so many people where, you know, it's like this instant kind of, they take a weekend workshop and they're instant trauma deactivators. I mean, that scares a shit out of me because there's just so much craziness involved. It's like, uh, no, you know, do your thing. You do you. I'm going to do me. And we're just going to move forward. So um, it, it's a really, it's a really cool thing to witness and for me to sort of witness my own evolution um, and what's happened is that, you know, I used to be like so, so angry and upset and, and hard, you know, I mean, it was one of the reasons why I, I, I aligned myself so much with Mark Passu because I can, I related to his frustration. I mean, mm -hmm. I just, God, dude, I get it. Oh my God, I get it. And then at the end of the day, it's like, I don't want to, that hard feminine is not th that's toxic masculinity for me okay so for me to be able to round off and soften those edges and to be a um be a champion for 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 love for truth for beauty coming from a feminine perspective mm -hmm. an integrated feminine perspective because i've had to work through a lot of my dark toxic feminine shit my dark toxic masculine shit and you know the way i did that is i had to own the fact that because i spent so much time in my masculine of doing 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 and being out in the world and trying to figure it out because you know i i wasn't protected ever by my family so i had to go out and do that be the dad be the mom repair it myself you know i did a lot of really just uh emasculating if you will my own masculine so coming to terms with my own inner man and going okay dude i am so sorry i'm so sorry that i've done this to you and uh you know to be able to come from a place of integration and wholeness within my own self you know rather than projecting it out onto men that oh you didn't do this and this and this now no chica you you got to do it for yourself we all have to do it for ourselves and we all have to um come from a place of uh, uh, uh the heart space you know just that heart space of of uh acknowledgement you know, acknowledging our path, acknowledging the journey that we've been on, uh, it, as painful as it's been, acknowledging the betrayals, acknowledging the the, the sort of soul sucking uh, craziness that we have um, survived and learned to thrive despite, you know, the the sort of uh, setbacks. You know, because at the end of the day, it's like we can't stop it, it, it is just this this ongoing creation that's happening it doesn't stop mm -hmm. absolutely well said um the yeah the journey never stops like it's 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 ongoing it's not like you said at the beginning uh once you're awake it's a light switch and and there you are yeah. you get it and you've done the work it it, it just keeps going yeah well, Maria, it has been an absolute pleasure, and uh, I feel like we could just go on for hours about this. Uh, you were just getting into some of the, the masculine and feminine stuff, which is another uh, very passionate topic of mine. Maybe that awesome. would make a good follow-up episode where we get into those topics there. But right, we'll for it. the sake of time, we're going to wrap this up. So go ahead and just tell the audience where they can find you and what you're working on currently. All right, my love. So... Um... My website is love, truth, and beauty, and beauty .com. And uh, if you go there, I have some uh, free trainings that you can sign in for. 
if you upped in. And my um, YouTube is Love, Truth, and Beauty. And uh, I've got like all these videos on all kinds of stuff from dealing with narcissists, sociopaths, and psychopaths to exiting the matrix to reality creation. I have a new series called Conversations with Men. In fact, I wanna invite you uh, to be one of my guests with that series because uh, you have a lot to say regarding the masculine. Love to, um, that sounds wonderful. I'd love for you to, to be part of that. And so we'll, we'll talk more about that. And uh, what am I doing? I am just, I'm enjoying life <laughs> right now. I've taken a little bit of a hiatus. Um, I have some programs that are like happening right now that are getting ready to like close out. And uh, I'm working on a, uh, a series of classes called Spiritual Kung Fu. And uh, so uh, right now I am uh, working out the details of the White Belt series, which is the first module. And we're going to be talking about energy mastery. And this is all do-it-yourself stuff. Just distilled to its brass tacks. Nothing complicated. Because everybody needs to know this. Because everybody is this. Mm. Energy in the body. Divine in the flesh. So that's what I'm up to. Amazing. Love it. Again, what a great conversation. It was so nice having it. Um, looking forward Thank to doing for it again. Me. My pleasure. Absolutely. So that's all the time we have, everyone. Thanks for watching. If you did get value out of this content, please give the video a like. Again, that helps kind of push it out and let more people see it. And it's subscribe again if you have not already. And we will see you next time in the next episode. But until then, be empowered, be inspired, and be encouraged. Mm -hmm.